You're listening to WBH Radio. I'm your host, William Holly. Thank you for tuning in to this special episode. Big time guests in the building. This young man is one of the best high school basketball players, not only in Brooklyn, but in the city. But he won't be for too much longer. In the fall 2021, he will be playing Division I basketball for the Hofstra Pride out here in Long Island, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, star guard for Thomas Jefferson Orange Wave, Mr. Jaquan Carlos. JC! What's up? Let's go back to March 2020. The world comes to a standstill. Global pandemic, right? Where were you and the Thomas Jefferson Orange Wave at at that point in your season? Uh, we just actually finished the uh, Elite Eight okay. game versus John Bound. And we actually found out the news that we wasn't going to play in practice. Wow. Like, we just finished the practice. I think this was about, like, a Wednesday. We were supposed to play Saturday versus South Shore right. in the Final Four. We in practice. So, Bud, Coach Bud is like, yo, I got good news and bad news. So, once he said that, everybody already had a feeling. Right. Like, some of the seniors, see the, like, they face, they whole demeanor change. Yeah. Then he like, yo, which one y'all want to hear first? <laughs> So we all said, we said good. And then we like, nah, just give us the bad. Let the good, let us leave on a good note. Right. He said, yo, game canceled. Okay. Then he said, the only good part is that it could get rescheduled, hopefully. Mm-hmm. But once we we went to the locker room, between us, we like, yo, man, it's over. It's a dub. It's, it's a, a done dub. Deal. So you guys were in the final four fighting for... A city championship and that's tough man you are one of the best high school basketball players in the city that was what your junior year yeah that was my junior year you used to getting up each and every day being with your teammates competing practice shooting running and all of a sudden it stops mm-hmm. what was that like for you as a young man so i feel like we've always heard from the mayor and the commissioner we ain't really I hear mean, from I the get- young folks that whole thing, like, it was just weird to me because it never happened. Like, as a kid, you always talk about, y'all wish did something happened, we could just go away from school for so long. <laughs> but then it really happened, and, like, it just took away from everybody. Like, yeah. it just, we just, it just never happened. Mm-hmm. So, like, it was just, like, a weird, weird feeling. Like, just waking up, just, I was getting up so early for school. Now I'm getting up, and, like, I ain't even getting up for school no more. I'm just up in my house. Yeah. Then it's, like, around, like, 2, 220, I used to be getting ready for practice. Now, 2 two twenty, I'm in the house. Nothing. Nothing. What's the longest you went without playing basketball at that point of the, the Like band? that point? <laughs> I don't know. It, it, I, I took a break, though. A couple weeks. Like a months. couple weeks. I took a couple weeks because I, like, I, I felt like it was over. So I'm like, yo, it's over. Then, but then AU was coming. Okay. So I was going to play with PSA. So I started like trying to get ready for that. I started running like behind my house around the track. But then once we heard that was taken away, it's like wow. That was a wrap too. That was a wrap too. As a as a point guard, as a leader, uh, did you try to keep your guys together? As yeah, much like as you actually, could? we had a group chat. Like yeah. we got a group chat. So I actually started off. I was running around the track behind my house, and we all had to send a video, like outside running somewhere. Like that was our thing. Like everybody send a video or a picture to the chat, yeah. like with your mask on, just running somewhere. Trying to, trying to keep everybody together still. Trying to keep everybody even just virtually. in case. Yeah. That's dope, man. That's dope. Look at you being a floor general <laughs> even during a pandemic. So last year in New York City, everything was shut down. Mm-hmm. Even uh, up until the fall. Because some other states were playing high school basketball, but we didn't. Mm-hmm. So... We thought, like, your career might be over. Mm -hmm. In fact, Thomas Jefferson went ahead and retired your jersey. Rightfully so. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on that, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate it. What was that? What's the number? Five? Yeah. Okay. Nobody's ever going to wear five for (laughs) Thomas Jefferson again. So we thought your career was over. And then, boom, New York City PSAL, the league, they decided they're going to put a season together right now in the spring. What was it like to think your high school career is over and then all of a sudden... There's daylight. There's more games. Uh, it, was, it was definitely a great feeling because I thought that was my last <laughs> game ever in a Jeff jersey, like a real official game in a Jeff jersey. So just having this back and just having these last couple of weeks with my brothers just to finish out, it's a good feeling. Practice and stuff. And you guys played a game 
the other day, the first time in a year, and you proceeded to score how much in that game back? Uh, I had 51 that game. <laughs> JC, I guess you really did miss the game, <laughs> yeah. son. How was it being back out there? Uh, it, it just felt good. Even like it wasn't no crowd, like it just felt good just being back out there, like running through that door, yeah. doing that game warm up. Like it just felt good. Like it just felt like a time that it's going to be tough when it's really over, a time that you could just never get back. Got you, got you, man. I'm, I'm glad you guys have a chance to finish out the, the right way. The number five, how'd you end up with that number? Uh, my, my little brother's birthday is November 5th. Okay. So I wear five. Okay. That's cool. As your career at Thomas Jefferson winds down, what do you think, or what do you want your legacy to be at Thomas Jefferson? What do you think your contribution to the program has been? Uh, I just felt like I kept the tradition going. Jefferson always is known for having like that one good guard. Right. So I felt like I just kept the tradition going, just going Division One. That's all I just want to be remembered for doing. You did. Yeah. You did. You came in at an interesting time for the program. You mm -hmm. know, when I was growing up, it was always about Grady, Boys and Girls, and Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And then Bud gets the job, Coach Lawrence, Bud Polish, shout out to Coach Bud. He gets the job at, at Thomas Jefferson, and he starts to create some buzz, let the city mm -hmm. know he's on, he, he's here to compete. Starting with uh, Keith Spellman mm -hmm. and Ed Jamaica. They started making some, some mm -hmm. noise. And then in 2016, it all came together. Mm -hmm. One of the most dynamic uh, backcourts in PSL history, Rod Dunn, who went on to score 1,000 points in college, is getting ready to finish his career at Robert Morris. Shamari Pons, who went up and tore up the Big East for St. John's, ended up playing in the NBA. But I feel like there was still some skeptics and maybe some questions like, yo, all right, bud, you could catch lightning in the bottle one time, but what you going to do now after yeah. that mass exodus of talent? And the answer was Jaquan Carlos. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You're right. You really kept the tradition going because people had some questions like, are, are they here to stay? And you cemented that legacy, man. Definitely. You cemented that legacy, man. Kudos to you. Was there pressure associated with following such a, 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 a dynamic team? As I mentioned with Rod Don, Shamari Pons. Uh, it, I wouldn't say pressure because like I was a freshman. Like I ain't really think I was going to come in and do what I did my <laughs> freshman year. Like I came in, like I actually knew I was going to Jeff probably like, like, couple like a week or two before school even started. Wow, it was out of Jeff or Lachlan. Bishop Lachlan. Yeah, okay. Bishop Lachlan. But then at Lachlan, they was telling me like, uh, we don't know if you're gonna play Voss. You might gotta play your own freshman team. But then Bud said, Yo, if you come in, do what you gotta do. Yeah, it's there for you. Like the opportunity, yeah, I ain't gonna hand it to you. You just come and do what you gotta do. So I think that stuck with me. Yeah. So then when I finally got to the program, they actually needed a guard. Mm -hmm. They just had the team. They went to the chip. They played Lincoln. They had like guys like Khalil Rhodes from Styra City. Those all those guys were seniors. Right. So they needed another guard. And then I just stepped right in. Stepped right in. Stepped right in. That's dope, man. That's dope. Is there a moment, maybe in a game, a camp, a clinic, that you would consider your coming out party? When you put the city and the country on notice that, yo, JC is a name you might want to know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, actually, in the summertime, we ain't, I ain't really get to play with them like that. With Jeff? I played, yeah, with Jeff. I played like one or two games in the Gersh High School League with them. And Dean Street, I actually couldn't play. There's no incoming freshmen could play with right. the high school team. So it was a tournament. Like the first month of school, it's called Hype City. They had it at South Shore. Mm -hmm. First game, we played... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we played St. Ray's, our first game. Okay. I came off the bench that game, too. I had like 25 off the bench. <laughs> and then that's when it started. Right. Like, it just started after that. Then we played South Shore next. I had a great game. Then we made it to the chip. I had a great game. We have, we lost, though. But I think ever since that Hype City tournament, that's when I put it on notice. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, man. It's, it's funny because you said bust. I ain't going to hand it to you, but the opportunity is there. And some young people could shy away from that. Yeah. You know, they looking for handouts today. They need guaranteed spots. But you decided to jump at that opportunity. Why? Why did that stay with you? Uh, cause just just knowing that he's not gonna give nothing to mm -hmm. me. Anything that I get is earned. Like I, I I don't want nothing given to me. Cause like that's not gonna get you better. Right. Cause then like now I gotta go to college. It's a 
all these guards from different places, we gotta all fight for that spot. Yeah. So it's like it just it's just not good when it's given to you because then you're not gonna work as hard as if you was fighting with somebody to get the spot. Right. Right. <laughs> that's dope, man. That's 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 a special quality. Uh, you talked about summer basketball, summertime, and New York City. What are some of your fondest moments hooping around the city in the summer? Uh, definitely NY versus NY. I feel like that was like. That's like the best tournament to me in the city, like as a summer tournament, because it's just like all talents right. from all different boroughs, like Brooklyn, Queens, and just the best of the best play in it. Let's talk, let's tell the people NY versus NY. There are Nike sponsored tournaments across mm-hmm. the city, uh, Rucker Park, Gersh Park in Brooklyn, uh, was it Lincoln Park, Lincoln Park in Queens, Dykeman Park, and they take the best talent from those local areas. Mm-hmm. And they all play, play together in a big tournament. And you being from Brooklyn, you represented Gersh Park. Gersh Park. Shout out to DP and Gersh Park. I was looking online the other day at that game, actually. And the title read Jaquan Carlos versus Cole Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> Cole Anthony. So how how did that game go? What do you remember about uh, that? Uh the game, I, the game went well. Like the game, it was a tough game. It was packed. A lot of celebrities there. Uh, and just knowing Gersh, we was undefeated. Okay. So Gersh ain't never lose a game, and and I knew I knew that Cole Anthony and them was coming to the game. I knew they was coming to the game. So then it was like it was just tough. Like yo, you you got Cole Anthony and right. Joe Toussaint. Right. What you gonna do? Like, so but I I just we tied the same kicks, play with the same basketball. You just gotta go out there and play. For sure. Was that your first time matching up against him? Uh yeah. We actually were supposed to play them that year, but he was hurt. We played Malloy in a Christ the King tournament, but he was hurt. Gotcha. So then we eventually played in the Rucker and Wa. That's a big stage, man. Yeah, you're from Brooklyn. You represent Gersh Park. Now you in the world famous Holcomb Rucker, and you matched up against Cole Anthony, one of the best guards in the city, man. Like. That's crazy. When I saw that that video, I was like, "Yo, look at JC holding his own, man." <laughs> yeah, How did the game go? Yeah, uh, we won. We won actually, and I got MVP of the game. The game went well. It was a tough game. We battled out. Uh, my teammates, Kadari Richmond and Femi, and the twins, Kareem Welch. Like it was definitely a tough game. We just battled it out. <laughs> Yo, for those who don't know, those matchups are star studded. JC said, "Yo, the celebrities come out. It's the bright lights." It's the bright lights, man. And I, I, it's impressive to see you playing on that stage with poise and composure. Cole Anthony just finished his rookie year in the NBA. Yeah, definitely. What's it do for you when you see guys that you've lined up against playing on the biggest stage? Like, what's that do for your confidence? Uh, it's definitely motivation. <laughs> like, the same guy that was just right here, right with me playing in these same parks. So it's just like, yo, it's motivation. And just knowing somebody that's there, like I could always speak to Cole for like advice, stuff to do. So like, it's just motivation. And I feel like it just works in the best option for me. That's amazing, man. <clears throat> they don't know, man. Uh, summer basketball in New York City is uh, a big deal. Yeah. So is AAU. You know, mm-hmm. what, what can you say about your AAU career? Uh, what team did you play for? You mentioned PSA or yeah, Scouser? I played play with PSA. For my the, the but the, the pandemic, mm-hmm. I actually played with New Heights before. Right, I've been playing with New Heights since I was like in eighth grade. Played with New Heights till I got all the way. What was that my sophomore year? Yeah, my sophomore year, sophomore year summer, I stopped playing. Like it just wasn't working out no more. So I parted ways with them. But then I eventually I I set out. What's up? What what? Why did you decide to part ways? I just it just was like uh like. I just wasn't really having fun. Okay. Like once you start ha- having fun, like yep. I just feel like you just gotta part ways. Mm-hmm. So I parted ways with them, but I sat out the rest of the year. Okay. I just stayed. I Bud just told me like I could just stay work on my game, get ready for my junior year. So I wasn't playing no AU, just in the gym every day, working out, getting stronger, getting faster. But all these AU teams wanted me to play with them. I'm sure. But I just wasn't just wasn't trying to do that. Right. So you made the switch to PSA? I made the switch to PSA. When was this? Uh I think I should say 2020. Before the pandemic? No, yeah, this was before the pandemic. Right. 
I made the switch at the end of the AAU, right before they went to Peace Jam. Okay. I went out there to Peace Jam with them. I ain't play though. I just went. He just told me, go see how it is before you jump into it next year. For sure. So I was on a trip with AJ Hogar, Hassan, Diara. Went on a trip, watched them play, and that's how that went. Was that your first time at Peace Jam? Yeah, first time. That's a big stage. Yeah, big stage, definitely. A lot of guards. It was definitely there. What'd you think of the uh, just definitely. being there and seeing the spectacle? Definitely something I wanted to be a part of. <laughs> Have you ever got to participate in one nah. of those national events? I, I mean, I played on the Under Armour circuit. What's that, you, the association? Yeah, okay. UA Association. You played at what age? I played 15s and 16s. Okay. I played 15s and 16s. We both was winning those both years. I think we made it to the Final Four both years and lost. But it was definitely a great experience, but definitely Peace Jam was something different. What's the toughest matchup you've ever had head to head? Uh it's hard to not say Cole Anthony. Yeah. Cole. Cole. Gotta, yeah, gotta yeah. go with that. I gotta go with Cole. Because I'm sure people circle your name when it's time yeah, to match yeah. up against you. Definitely, but you gotta go with Cole yeah. Anthony. That's yeah. hands down. Yeah, yeah. You had some tough battles here in New York City playing against Femi and Kadari, you mentioned they were teammates in New York versus New York, yeah. but in the PSAL, you've had to go up yeah, against those. They was teammates. <laughs> and that's some big guards, man. Yeah. That's some big guards. What can you say about competing in the PSAL and being one of the top dogs? Uh, What's it like every day walking in the gym and knowing every, people are looking for you? Every day, you got to come out and give your best because mm -hmm. they trying to, they playing, they, everybody going to play their best versus me. Yes. So if I don't come out and play my best, <laughs> They, they gonna feel like they got one up on me. Then they go on social media. <laughs> then that's when all that start. So you just gotta come out every night and be your best versus the worst team. They gonna come out and play you as hard. They might play everybody else with trash. Yeah. Once they play Tommy Jefferson and no JC on the court, it's a it's, it's a different type of game. I feel like. Yeah, yeah. And you young people got a. This is a different environment because everybody got a camera. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, how much does that play in your mind? Like, yo, yeah, this, definitely. You I can't let them get a moment on me. You definitely gonna be all over Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, YouTube, all over. Right, right. Uh, real quick, on, on I was talking about the AAU programs. What makes an AAU program? Like, what what are what are young people looking for? in a potential home when they talk about a, a, a AAU program to make their own, to call their own? Uh, definitely just a, like a bunch of kids that's willing to work. Like mm -hmm. AAU is basically like on the court, like it's like an all-star team. Mm -hmm. You the, the all the best kids at your school. Right. So it's just sacrifice, like you just got to sacrifice mm -hmm. and just play your part, play your role. Everybody can't be the one who's going. It might be your night, this trip, this game, next trip, it might not be. You just got to be happy for your brothers. That's what I feel like make a good AAU team. Got you. Got you. Well, I'm supposed, what about the program itself? Is oh, it coaches? Uh, it's everybody, like from the from the head guy to the players. Like it just people that but you got to believe in each other, have mm -hmm. your trust. There's people you got to really trust and just, just got to believe. Because I only see it from a distance. And at times it feels like they just plucking guys from different now yeah, it's, def it's definitely some 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 programs that just get guys, just right. throw them together. But then it's the good ones that some cohesion. Some guys, it's definitely like nah, like I'm sticking with them. We gonna work with them from eighth grade all the way up. But it's definitely some programs that just get guys, throw them all together. But then it's, there's really some teams where, like you got they got relationships with your parents, with your like with everybody, and then that's what I feel like that make a real AAU team. Got you, got you. So JC, as your high school career comes to an end, uh, what would you like to say to your Thomas Jefferson support group? Because Thomas Jefferson, they man, it's a family over there. Yeah. You walk in that gym, you see orange shirts yeah. everywhere. Little kids, the yeah. women, the men. Like you guys got a tight knit man. What would you say to your support group that has been holding you down for the last four years? I definitely couldn't like it, without y'all. This wouldn't even happen. So I gotta be the most appreciative to y'all. Like I thank them for everything. Like mm -hmm. just help me off the court. Like just wow. becoming more of a young man. Like just become more of a young man. Just helping me grow into that. Man, and I'm gonna be one day. It's just a lot of help, gotcha. and just treat me like I was one of their own, like one of I'm like their own kid. So yeah, yeah, that place gets rocking. Yeah, they got for those who don't know, Thomas Jefferson got like the double deckers. Man, it's yeah. a small, intimate gym. Small. It gets crazy. Definitely, it gets crazy, man. Let's talk about this college decision, man. 
first off, JC, if you could just help me and the coaches around the globe, what are you young folks looking for in a college program? Like, um, definitely, definitely somewhere where I, like I feel I could trust, where I got my best interest, and just a winning program. Mm -hmm. Winning program definitely got guys that make it to the next level, and just just a good brotherhood. Like mm -hmm. that's all that it could be. And you found that in Hofstra. Yeah, I found, I feel like that's that's where that was at. Okay, what are some other schools that were after you? Uh, Pittsburgh, Oklahoma State, Fordham, uh, Virginia Tech, schools like that. I'm going to tell you why I opted to uh, reach out to you and ask you to do the podcast. I was at an AAU tournament a few weeks ago, and they were discussing New York City basketball, and your name came up, and they said you had indeed chose to play for Hofstra, mm -hmm. despite having... Offers from, as you mentioned, ACC schools like Pitt or Oklahoma State. And I said, wow, that's an impressive decision. Because to me, some of those other programs may be more prominent, mm -hmm. maybe more Definitely. well known. So for you to say, nah, I'm riding with Hofstra, spoke volumes about who you were as a young man. Like, mm -hmm. yo, that's a leader. That's somebody who's not afraid to make an unpopular decision. That's, that's somebody who believes in themselves. So I was thoroughly impressed by that decision, man. And I, I heard in an interview that you did a, a while ago, a while back, you said, I chose Hofstra because they love me. Some other schools, they, they like me, but Hofstra loved me, man. Mm -hmm. What was it? What were some of the conversations you had with them? Like, what were those recruitment days like? Uh, it was just like, I felt like we spoke, every, we spoke a lot, like mm -hmm. a lot. And just ask me, besides basketball, just ask me, like, how things are going. Like, just telling me how things are going with life, school, my grades, what I'm doing off the court. Like, what's my daily hobbies. Like, they, I could feel like they really, like, cared and mm -hmm. really, like, believed in me as a person. Mm -hmm. Before even the basketball, like, I could really just be a great person after basketball, just coming out of Hofstra. When you signed on to play at Hofstra, who was the head coach? Uh, Joe Mahalik. And that recently changed. Yeah. Was there any reconsideration on your part? Or? Uh, nah, nah. I was good. <laughs> I, 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 I was good. Who's the head coach now? Speedy yeah, Claxton. Of Speedy Claxton. Former uh, player for the Hofstra yeah. Pride. Man, I, I just thought that was dope, son. Like, who helped you with that decision? Who are some of the people uh, you leaned on? Definitely Coach Bud. Coach Bud. Coach Nusi, Coach Sal. My mom, my dad, Coach Munch. Mm -hmm. just, it was just like a collective collective group of it that came down to that decision. Man, that's dope. That's dope, man. For you to say yes to Hofstra, and no, I, I was thoroughly impressed. When I heard that, I said, yo, can somebody get JC on the phone? I want to talk to that young man. Because I want to ask you, like, you and people of your ilk, do you guys understand that you are the prize? Yeah, that that that's what I felt like. Like, I just, but you got to look at it. In the NBA, all these all these guards that everybody watching, they ain't go high major. These guys, Steph Curry, Damian, these guys ain't go high major. Exactly. Tell them, JC. They, these guys. So like, you just gotta go to where you gonna play, where you gonna be able to play through your mistakes. You can't you can't learn from your mistakes on the bench. All right. So you just gotta go where you gotta play through your mistakes and where you could be you. I feel like at Hofstra, I could go there and be me. Like I feel like all these high schools, like one mistake, I'm out. Right. And, and then high schools like that. I could easily get over recruited, like it's, it's easy for that. And they school some high schools like that. They trying to beat like the Dukes, sure. so they reloading. They not trying to rebuild. So once they can't get that done, then you out of there. And that's how them coaches lose their jobs because after two three years they they not beating these schools. They out of there. So it's not really like a somewhere where you could like build mm -hmm. and make a name for yourself. I feel like at a house for like. Coaching staff gonna be the same. Speedy believe in me. I believe in Speedy, so he gonna ride with me right. through the uh, while I'm playing bad or while I'm at my all time high. He just gonna ride with me. So I feel like that was like a big decision. Yo, bro, that is very impressive. That is some maturity from a young man, man, especially in this era. And I don't even want to when it's about clout. Yeah, that, and then that's another thing. Like when I spoke to Munch and, and Bud, they was like, yo. You ain't gonna get the social media love from when they everybody finds out you're going there. But the love that you're gonna get at the end when you're done out there, that's the love you need. 
Like you when you post it, you ain't gonna go get twenty thousand likes, ad, like it's not gonna people not gonna really understand. Right. But the love that you that you gonna get, that you need, you're gonna get it. JC, man, yo, you talking that talk today, bro. I swear to God, like we was at the tournament and they said, Yeah, yeah, Virginia Tech, he had a pit. He went to Hofstra. I said, yo, that's dope, son. You guys are the prize. I think a lot of young people feel sometimes like, yo, if I don't go to this school or that school, if I don't play yeah. for this coach, I'm not going to make it. Uh, that's not the case, not man. The case at all. You could play, you could play, they're going to find you. That's it. The real is going to prevail, <laughs> man. There, there was a kid, there was a dude from Queensbridge Projects who chose to stay local, play at St. John's. He went on to have a decent career. Maybe you heard the name. Ron Artest. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Metal World Priest. My man Quincy Doobie used to star William Grady, went to Rutgers, lit it up, end up going in the first round. Isaiah Whitehead, Seton Hall, lit it up, end up going to the NBA. Your coach, <laughs> Speedy Claxton, Captain. put Hofstra on the map, son. And you got to remember, these general managers are human beings too. Mm -hmm. When it comes February and March and March Madness is on, we watching the Cinderella's mm -hmm. go on a magical run. That sticks, that resonates. You see people storming the court and everything. That resonates with GMs, man. So I was thoroughly impressed by that decision, man. Congratulations um, on that. You a young boy, man. What you know about Speedy Clax and the player? <laughs> I, I, I really, I knew about him, but once I, once they started like offering me, we started speaking, that's when I got more, like more in tune with him. Mm -hmm. And I watched a lot. And then he, it's tough. He played with Tim Duncan. He had a, I think that was, what game was that he had a big game? I want to say it was like game three mm -hmm. or game four, game five. It was one of those games. He had a big game. Tony Parker wasn't playing like that. He came in, had a big game. So mm -hmm. things like that stick with me. Mm -hmm. And then like somebody like Speedy, like hey, he got connections. He played in the NBA, got an NBA championship. And he knows the ins and outs. Mm -hmm. He's from New York just like me. Mm -hmm. He went to Hofstra just like me. And he made it from Hofstra, just like how I want to do it. Yes, sir. So, like, he knows what it, he got the blueprint. It's yep. just if I'm going to follow it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Speedy, he had a great career. And I feel like that's not just about talent. I, guys stick around when they're professional, mm -hmm. you know. And, and Speedy can teach you the craft of being a pro. Definitely. You know, on and off the court. When he got hired at Hofstra, Greg Popovich was singing his praises. Jay Wright, who's down at Villanova, who was his coach when mm -hmm. he was at Hofstra, he spoke highly of him. Chris Paul spoke highly of him. A lot of people. That's somebody that's respected, man. He could teach you that craft of being a ball player, man. Y'all about to do something crazy. Like, Definitely. do you feel that? Yeah, I can't wait. Like certain times, like like Bud and, and your coach was saying, you you may not get the love on the front end. Yeah. People may be scratching their head. Why Hofstra? But when it's all said and done, like I really think y'all gonna do something special. Speedy is returning to his alma mater as the head coach. JC playing in his backyard. I think you guys are, are, are going to do something special. What are some of the the bonuses to playing so close to home? Uh, definitely, like my mom, my, all my parents, all everybody, just everybody from the town <laughs> can come to the game. That's what everybody want. Everybody from the city. Everybody from Brooklyn. Everybody talking about it, yo, I can't wait to come in again. You don't got to get me a free ticket. Get out to your family. We paying. Yeah. Like, we at every home game. Like, I just felt like the love is really going to be there. Like, just playing for your hometown. Like, and I can always come back, bud, come speak to bud and the kids, show, tell them what it's like. I just feel like it's just a lot of bonuses with it. Mm -hmm. Now, there may be some potential pitfalls playing close to home as well. Is that some conversations you've had with your support group? Uh, yeah, we we definitely had conversations about it, but it's just like you just gotta you just gotta stick with it. Like mm -hmm. you made the decision, you know why you made it, and just stick through it. You got you. It, it's about trials and tribulations. You just gotta get through it for sure. Now you've been the talk of the town for years. One of the best guards in the city. Coach Bud handed you the ball. It was your program. Now you go to Hofstra. You're the new kid on the block. Mm -hmm. First day of school again. Like, what's your mentality going into Hofstra? What's your approach like? What are maybe some of your expectations being a new guy again? Uh, it, same expect, same way. Like how I came into Jeff. Like nothing, nothing's gonna be given to me. He told me it's not given, but the opportunity is there. Mm -hmm. If you come in, do what you gotta do. You you work hard. The opportunity is there. So I'm just 
I'm just coming. I'm, I'm a sponge. I, like, I'm going to take everything that come with me. I'm going to just hear everybody out, listen to everybody, and then hopefully I do what I do, and then it's going to work out. That's dope, man. That's dope, man. Hops to pride. Hops to pride. Um, you should be going to school soon. Uh, yeah, you... I leave on uh, the 28th of June. 28th of month. June. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's dope, man. That's dope. Where are you from? You're from Brooklyn. Where yeah. exactly? In, uh, East New York. East New York. Star Right City. Yeah, Star Right City. You grew up there? Yeah, I grew up there. What was that like? Uh, it was definitely just older guys just playing ball. That's how I started playing, mm-hmm. like going behind my building, playing with the older guys. It was definitely a great, great lifestyle, great life there. Just And everybody, everybody seen it in me. Yeah. So everybody used to push me. Used to foul me, <laughs> make me cry. Like, yeah, got so, to. Yeah, so got it just, to. It just everything just worked out. There's a lot of D1 talent that came out of Star yeah, Right. I don't know if you're aware. Definitely. My man Saquon Stone, uh, he played at what was that? Iowa, I, I, Missouri. I think it was Missouri State. I forget. Uh, Thomas. Yeah, definitely. A lot of lot of lot of talented guys uh, coming out of Star Right City. My mom used to live in Star Right for years. And I know there's there's something called the front versus back game. Yeah. You ever participated in that? Yeah. For those who don't know, Star Right <laughs> City is a collection of buildings, and they every summer they play what's called a front versus back game. The front buildings versus the back. Yeah. Now, my mom lived there for 10 years. I still don't know which buildings make up the front. Uh, it's, oh. the, uh, it's the buildings. That's basically... <laughs> all right, so it's the mall. Okay. So the the the, the buildings behind the mall is okay. the back. Okay. In front of the mall is the front. Yo, that's the best explanation I've gotten. Yo, I get it now. <laughs> People have tried to explain it to me ten million times. I I lived in Freeport. I didn't know which building, I, which group I belonged with. That's the back. That's the back now. According back. to the explanation, that was amazing. Thank you. Have you played in that game? Yeah, I played. Uh, I played. How many times I played? Twice, three times. I played in my age. I got MVP though every year though, and stuff like that. That's dope. But it definitely, it just. It's just a lit day. It's yeah. It's just fun. Community. Everybody playing. Everybody mom outside. Just a good time. Yeah. Community. Community. For sure. For sure, man. JC, man. Congratulations, young man. Appreciate it. Uh, before we go, that's what I'm going to ask you. This is what I want to say. Uh, you play at Thomas Jefferson High School. It's on mm-hmm. Pennsylvania Avenue. Mm-hmm. There are some... Local youth tournaments that take place in Thomas Jefferson, and I've been there to a coach and 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 be a spectator a handful of times. And every time I've walked in there, I've looked in that auxiliary gym, and I see you in there working out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Dreads flopping, putting in the work. Whether it's the weekend, like I think a lot of these young kids, they want the the to have a stellar career like you did, score two thousand points, be celebrated. They want the attention of Division One coaches. They want the JC life, but I don't think they understand the amount of work that goes into Definitely. the success that you have achieved. So if you could speak to what it takes outside of just practice with your team and games, what's it been like? What's the type of work that you've put in to get to this point? Uh, definitely, like a lot of extra work, staying late, coming early. Just coming early before games, coming early before playoff games, coming in on the weekend, just sacrifice. Like, uh, you can't go out and party with your other friends. They ain't trying to do what you're trying to do. Like, I got friends, they like to party, do a lot of things, but they ain't trying to do what I'm trying to do. They got their own thing. I'm trying to play basketball, go to the NBA. So I can't go party with them on the weekend. I got to go to the gym. Yeah. I got to go to the gym in Styrus. I got to go to the sports club. They out, they doing they, what they doing. I can't go do that. Right. I got it. I'm trying to play in the NBA. They ain't trying to do that. So it's just a lot of sacrifice. You got to sacrifice the fun now. So in a couple years, you can have all the fun you want to have. Yo, bro, that that's so impressive. And a lot of young people, they don't get that. Yeah. You know, and that's another reason I want to have you on. Because as a coach, I can say all type of things to the young folks, but they just wave me off. Well, that's yeah, just coach yeah. being coach. But when they see one of their peers... You know, I'm around high school kids. They are aware of who you are. They see what you're doing. And to have it come out of your mouth, yo, it takes sacrifice. Yeah. I think that's really going to stick with them. Even when I was trying to uh, uh, get him on his podcast, it was a little tough because my man said, yo, well, I'm doing two-a-days. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I got my scholarship, but this is just the beginning, man. Yeah. 
Tell me, what's your days like now? What's going on with these two a days? Uh, definitely two a day. Got practice in the morning at Jeff. Then I go to the sports club by my house, Star City. Or sometimes I might go to an open run. I'd mm -hmm. be at the post or at a gym in Bushwick. It just it's just a lot. I just try to consist my day with a lot of basketball. Mm -hmm. Try to get used to a two a day. So when I get on the campus, a two a day is nothing. Mm -hmm. We trying to work for three a day, two a day, and then come later put up extra jump shots. So it just it's just about consistency. I'm just trying to build it up now. So when I get there, it's just not brand new. So what's that? Uh, you like to play full? Is it drills? Is it uh, individuals? I, I I like to play like a lot of full, mm -hmm. I, a lot of full, but I like to get a lot of shots up because you you got to have a jump shot. You got to be able to make an open jump shot. Yes, sir. So I like to get up a lot of shots. I definitely play a lot of those full court or half court. I just try to get a lot of work in. Mm -hmm. A lot of like live basketball work in. That's it, man. Very impressive, brother. When I do these podcasts, there are always going to be things I forget. There are always going to be missed opportunities to take the conversation cool places. And the Jaquan Carlos interview is no different. I know. I, I got to get better. But there was one part to his story that I didn't want to go untold. In the spring of 2021, JC will be finishing his high school career at Thomas Jefferson High School. In the fall of that same year, he will begin his college basketball career at Hofstra University, which means right out of high school, he qualified for the NCAA, which means right out of a New York City public high school, he was eligible to accept his college scholarship. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's no small feat. That's something he should be very proud of, especially in this day and era where many of our athletes have to go to prep school or junior college to raise their grades. He did not. Truly something to be proud of. And I heard him speaking on another show. That's not something that just happened by chance. He was pushing for it. He was, he was striving for the ability to accept a college scholarship right out of high school. So in the midst of playing big time summer basketball in New York versus New York against uh, Division I talent from all around the city, including Cole Anthony, somebody that would go on to be an NBA player. In the midst of putting in the extra work, like he said, before games, after game, before practice, after practice, in the midst of being a centerpiece for everything that's been going on at Thomas Jefferson over the last couple of years, he found time to get it done in the classroom. So for all the other young athletes around the city, what's your excuse? <laughs> you don't have any, do you? If one of our best and brightest found time to do both basketball and school, you folks can do it too. And JC mentioned that, you know, his coach, Lawrence Bud Pollard, pushed him to do so. Yo, dog, you can be eligible right out of high school. So not only is it the responsibility of the young athlete, but it's incumbent upon us coaches, parents, leaders to hold these youngsters to the highest standard as well. And elevate New York City basketball across the globe. Too many of our kids are getting lost in the sauce. Yeah, they could ball, but they ain't getting it done in the classroom. Yeah, he was supposed to go to this school, but he didn't qualify academically. That's all trash, man. It can be done. Man, I'm kicking myself because I didn't bring that up while he was here. <sighs> All right, man. Back to regularly scheduled programming. Ah! Get some shout outs, man. Uh, I definitely want to shout out Thomas Jefferson. Definitely want to shout out Hofstra. And just everybody, just be ready. Be it, ready. Tom is coming. <laughs> man, you got to say hi to your mama, man. <laughs> I want to shout out my mom and my dad. <laughs> Yo, I feel something special is about to happen, man. Definitely. I really do. Y'all about to... Y'all about to do something special right there in Long Island. 
Uh, shout out to Coach Bud for helping to uh, uh, put this interview together. Shout out to Speedy Clax and head coach of Hofstra. Coach Serge Clement, my guy. Man, y'all got one. Y'all got yeah. one. JC, thank you for joining me, no young problem. man. WBH Radio, I'm your host, William Holly. We out. <laughs>